Hi, these are the lecture notes for Chapter 2, um, The Chemistry of Life. Let me go ahead and um, set it up. Let's see. Okay, so um, this is, there are two chapters on chemistry, and this is going to be the chapter on, like, basic chemistry. Um, there's pr this information you have probably seen before in um, maybe middle school and high school, but on um, science classes. But anyway, some of it is really basic. And you can see on the first page, we um, begin this chapter with, Anytime we talk about chemicals, um, you start out with, um, so what are chemicals? Um, matter is a form of, is, is any type of chemical or substance that occupies space and has mass. And a lot of times we say that has a, for occupies space, we say that it has a volume. Sometimes for have, has mass, um, we might even say weight, but um, mass is more accurate, and we measure mass in um, grams or kilograms or sometimes milligrams, depending on how small or how large. Um, <clears throat> elements are the simplest forms of matter, and they're also the um, substances that are listed on the periodic table of the elements. So, um, and don't worry, we don't have to learn, memorize anything off of the periodic table, but we will um, look at some of the information that you can get from the periodic table. But elements are the simplest forms of matter. They cannot be broken down into smaller substances. And then the smallest unit of an element is an atom. So that's how it's, it's defined here. It's the smallest unit of matter that retains all the chemical properties of an element. But it is fine if you just shorten that a little bit and call that an atom is the smallest unit of an element. So atoms um, are composed of particles called subatomic particles. And there are three of them. There are protons and neutrons, which are located inside the nucleus of the atom. Here you see a helium atom shown. And the helium atom, um, abbreviation HE, has two neutrons. Those are the neutrons. And then it has two protons. Protons have positive charges. And then um, helium also has two electrons, and those have negative charges. This is a table that lets you know the charge and location of the subatomic particles. Um, make sure you know that a proton has a charge of positive one, that has a positive charge. It's located in the nucleus. The neutron has a neutral charge or zero charge, also located in the nucleus of the atom. And then the electron has a negative one or negative charge and it's located outside the nucleus in orbitals or electron um, energy levels sometimes is what you'll hear, electron shells, um, but definitely make sure you know electrons are located outside the nucleus. And as far as the mass, th this mass is recorded in atomic mass units. It's not recorded in milligrams or because it's such a small mass. But the main thing about the mass is to understand that the mass of the atom is really based on the mass of the protons and the neutrons. Because compared to electrons, a proton and a neutron has a, has a mass unit of one. The electron is zero. So the electron really contributes very little to the mass of the atom. And that's what I want you to understand there. Now, on the periodic table, there are two numbers, and the smallest number is the atomic number. And the atomic number is simply the number of protons in that particular element, in an atom of that particular element. Now, if it is an atom, not an ion, in other words, if, it do, if it's a neutral atom with no charge, then it's going to have the same number of protons as electrons. The positive charges are going to balance out the negative charges. If we go back to this, you can see there's two 
protons here and here, and then there's two electrons. Now the two neutrons is merely a coincidence. The neutrons don't have to be the same number as the protons or electrons, and sometimes they're not. Okay, isotopes are different forms of the same atom that have different numbers of neutrons. Okay, there's no examples. All right, so I will give you an example. Um, there are three isotopes of the atom um, carbon. So this is what the symbol for carbon would look like on the periodic table. I'm gonna put the atomic number, the smaller number at the top, but sometimes it just depends on the periodic table. Sometimes the atomic number is on the top and sometimes it's on the bottom. But the atomic number for carbon is six and the mass number is 12. There is an isotope of carbon. Now the atomic number will never be different for an atom. If the atomic, if the atomic number, which is the number of protons, changes, then the entire atom will change. It will not be the same atom. So carbon will always have six for its atomic number, but there's an isotope of carbon that has a mass number of 13. And there is another isotope of carbon whose atomic number is six and mass number is 14. So what information can we get from these, um, these symbols? Well, what we can get is we can get the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for every isotope of carbon. So on the left, um, carbon 12, we can tell from the six, the atomic number six, that there are six protons and six electrons because we know that the positive charges have to equal the negative charges in a neutral atom. Um, and we can subtract, the, since the mass number is the total of the protons and the neutrons, then we can take the mass number, which is 12, and we can subtract the atomic number, and 12 take away six gives, gives us six neutrons, and neutrons have a, have a neutral charge or a zero charge. Now, in the isotope carbon-13, um, still have six protons, six electrons, but this time 13 take away six is seven. So this isotope has seven neutrons. Then with carbon-14, six protons again and six electrons, we get that from the atomic number six. And then the mass number 14, subtract the atomic number six, gives us eight neutrons. So isotopes are forms of the same atom with different numbers of neutrons, and therefore their mass numbers are gonna be different. Um, the atomic mass is going to be a little bit different than the mass number. The mass number is equal to the number of protons and neutrons, but the atomic mass, see if we go back to this page, the atomic mass is an average of all of the masses of the isotopes. Hello? Yes. I'm sorry, I just got a phone call. Sometimes that happens while I'm recording, but anyway, um, I'm back. So, um, so we were uh, talking about the atomic mass number. And that is going to be an average of the mass numbers of all the isotopes of an element. So you don't just take and add 12, 13, and 14 together because the Earth doesn't have an equal amount of each of those isotopes. Um, the most common isotope is carbon-12. So you would have to have the percentage of carbon-12, the percentage of carbon-13, and the percentage of carbon-14 and then you would multiply each number time their, times their percentage and add that together. Um, so it's an average of the mass numbers of the isotopes of an element, okay? So it says it's the calculated, the atomic mass is the calculated mean or average of the mass numbers for the isotopes of an element. And that is the reason why, in fact, I believe the mass number for carbon is 12.01, if I remember correctly. 
Um, I don't look at the periodic table very often, but anyway, the, the atomic mass will be a decimal number. The mass number is actually a whole number because the mass number is technically the number of protons plus neutrons, but the atomic mass is an average, okay? So the mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. And that comes out to be somewhere around the, you can round the atomic mass and get the mass number, basically. So when you round 12.01, you get the mass number 12. Now, here we are at the periodic table, and I was wrong. It's 12.11. That is the atomic mass, so the mass number would be 12. So if you want to know the mass number for any of these elements, you just um, you just round the atomic mass. So um, for example, oxygen is 15.99. The atomic number is 8, and the atomic mass is 15.99. But you can round that to 16, and that's the mass number. So if we take oxygen, for example, oxygen has an atomic number of eight, so that gives oxygen eight protons. And we know the number of electrons is equal to the protons, so oxygen has eight electrons. And then if you find the mass number by rounding, that's 16. So 16 minus eight will give you the number of neutrons. In this case, it's eight neutrons. Hydrogen is given down at the bottom. Hydrogen's, ato hydrogen's atomic number is 1, and its atomic mass is 1.01. .01. So that rounds to 1. So what does that tell you? That tells you that hydrogen has one proton, one electron, because they have to be equal. And then since we round the atomic mass to get the mass number, you'd say 1 take away 1 gives you 0 neutrons. So hydrogen actually does not have any neutrons at least um, the most common form of hydrogen doesn't. Hydrogen has some isotopes that, have, um, that do have neutrons. Okay, so how is the periodic table organized? The elements are organized and displayed according to their atomic number. And they're arranged in columns based on shared chemical and physical properties. So the columns include elements that have, that have similar chemical and physical properties. And the periodic table also displays the element's atomic mass. And if you want to convert that to the mass number, you just round it. Now, um, for the electrons, each electron kind of has um, a certain region around the nucleus of the atom that it re spends most of its time. You have to understand that electrons move very, very fast and randomly. So the electrons are not orbiting in, in you know, like these perfect circles. They're not orbiting like the planets orbit the sun. They're moving around very fast and very randomly, but each electron, each electron has a region that it tends to stay within. So this is a model that shows um, the hydrogen electron in its, um, the, in its orbital. Sometimes we call these orbitals energy levels. And in hydrogen, the electron is located in the first energy level, closest to the nucleus. Energy levels are designated by a number and the symbol N. So 1N represents the first energy level, 2N is the second, 3N is the third, and so forth. Some atoms have up to um, five to seven energy levels because they have so many electrons. So electrons are gonna fill the orbitals or energy levels starting with the one closest to the nucleus and then moving further away. The octet rule, um, octet meaning eight, states that except for the innermost shell, sorry, our time's running out. I'll come back to this in the next.